Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna get a little nerdy together. We're gonna talk about sleep optimization. Yeah, so anyway, if you're new to my channel, my name is Kirsten and this channel covers topics like product launches, e-commerce, Kickstarter, building an audience online and random topics like making yourself better, improving and little like experiments and doing behind the scenes. So if you're new, uh, be sure to subscribe and love this video. Anyway, guys, um, today I wanted to talk about as we're getting to the end of 2020, getting, I want to summarize one of the biggest shifts that I've made that's really helped me so that going into the new year, you know, new year, new you, vibes, whatever. Um, I want to talk about, so 2020 was a weird year. There's no need to get into it. We all know, right? You know, you know, it was a weird year. And with everything, I chose to focus, like a lot of you guys, focus on my health and my habits. And instead of trying to get a laundry list together of changes I should make, I wanted to focus on the one thing that would make the difference because I do believe in the 80-20 principle. Oh, I just had to pause because the, um, the someone came in from the balcony and man, let's just say I get distracted and lose my train of thought. So anyway, uh, we were talking about 2020 and habits. And since you were gone, since I was gone, acquired two dogs, um, whatnot. But anyway, back to 2020 and health habits. So I believe in the 80-20 principle where 80% of, 20% of what you do yields 80% of the results in your life. So again, while I could have done a massive overhaul on health to get cleaner on the diet, quit wheat, uh, stop drinking, stop doing like any anything negative that could impact my health and my immune system, I chose to focus on the one thing that would make all the difference. And to me, that metric was sleep. I know that on days where I get, I am well rested, I get my seven and a half hours, I get the amount of REM and deep sleep I need, and it's very restful sleep, I wake up the next morning, feel like I can conquer the kingdom, conquer the day, win the day, right? So for me, the main thing that I wanted to start measuring and tracking more of in my life is sleep. So for the last two years, and yes, this is like a, I've started to get more experimental with like cause and effect of things that uh, improve or don't improve my sleep. But I wanna introduce you to my favorite wearable. Um, this is not a sponsored video, by the way, it's just someone who really loves the Aura Ring. But the Aura Ring is, it was a Kickstarter campaign uh, a few years back, and it is the world's best and most accurate sleep device. Where I know, um, and for a while it was the only wearable I ever uh, had. And what I love about it, A, it's like, there's no screen, so there's no notifi notifications, it doesn't beep but it has sensors on the inside of the ring that will keep track of your, like um, measure your pulse, measure your stress levels, your HRV, um, and that sort of thing. And because of their in-depth sleep analytics, which I'll um, like show you the app in a second, but with their in-depth analytics day over day, I was able to do experiments to see what I could do to impact my sleep in a positive way. So, I'll show you the app in a, actually, let's go to the app and then we'll, uh, I'll do a roundup with like things that helped me versus not. And hey, like, is this, is sleep something that just naturally comes easily to you or is sleep something that you've conquered? And if so, like, what are some tips that you have and you've done to improve your sleep? Like, let us know in the comments below. Um, and I've had all year to experiment how to improve my sleep. So let's actually take a look at some of the like metrics that go into that. All right, so this is the Aura app, and every morning when I wake up, I open this and I sync the data so that it's up to date. And the Aura app is awesome. It gives you, my uh, one of my favorite things about it is their readiness score. So the readiness score really tells you how ready you are for the day. And anything, really the goal is to get above 80, and this is determined by how active you are with like going to the gym, versus how well you're sleeping because it will measure a 360 like a really holistic approach to how uh, stressed your body is based on how it interacts with the whole environment so it's not just a sleep tracker it is an activity tracker to help see how that will impact your 
day. And so going through today, for example, my readiness is 76 and it has a little uh, agenda here. Um, you can actually dig into the readiness uh, section to see exactly what it is. So it covers your resting heart rate and clicking into it tells you exactly um, what this means and how to improve it. And if you're in a range that is not good, how to improve that. It tells you your HRV balance, which will tell you really how recovered you are from physical activity. That's one as a triathlete. I use that quite a bit. Um, and I also take a look at activity balance. Like, am I doing enough um, or too much exercise? Okay. So HRV balance will also tell you if you're overtraining or undertraining as well. Um, and overall, so you can see different factors that will contribute to overall how you're ready to perform the next day. But going into the sleep itself, the sleep will give you metrics on the day or you can look at trends over the week, the month. Uh, or the year to see where where you are trending. So if you sleep contributors, again, you want to see a score of over 80. And for me, um, a few things that I measure is I measure, okay, so total sleep for me is fine. You have efficiency. So how um, how good was the sleep you got in the time? Like the quality of the sleep, uh, really measured by the amount of deep sleep and the amount of REM sleep. So deep for me, I never have a problem with that deep. You're always looking about 20, 25%. But again, you can see in here, some people based on your biology and environment can completely vary. But on average, I know my deep sleep is pretty pretty good and that's because I figured out what sort of night habits I need to have in order to promote deep sleep. So you can see here what deep sleep is and this is for the body. So deep sleep is really um, really good if you're an athlete because it helps restore muscle function and how you're like physically performing. Whereas if you go into REM, REM is the rapid eye movement sleep, classically known as the sleep where your eyes move back and forth where you're dreaming. And REM sleep for me has always been an issue. REM is something that I'm still playing around with how to make that work. But sometimes biologically, that's just what it is. Because you could see a REM based on the individual is anywhere from 5 to 50%, but they want to see that about 20%. So very rarely do I get an optimal amount of REM sleep. And REM is how you re-energize your mind and your body. So that helps with memory, like short-term memory and cognitive function as well. So REM is super, super important. And when you look at um, quality of sleep, it's not the metric you shouldn't look at is total sleep because you, most people are going to sleep for seven, eight hours, but they were awake for two hours in the night. They got 7% deep sleep, 10% REM, and their quality of sleep is just very, very restless and not very good. So they wake up not fully re-energized or restored because the quality of the sleep was not good. So what I've been doing in 2020 is is doing these experiments to see like what sort of nighttime routine, what sort of stimulants or um, habits should I have that actually improve our sleep, right? And so for me, I'm able to track that over time to say, all right, for the next two weeks, I'm going to not look at my device one hour before bed. That way I can wind my body down and I'm not attracting blue light into it. Or I could have a look and say, all right, well, every time, um, like with something like this, if I didn't sleep well the night before and I could look at, okay, well, why didn't I sleep well the night before? So it says like, okay, uh, uh, low REM can be caused by, um, in like a non-regular sleep schedule, caffeine having like too late in the day or any stimulants with that. So you can actually go through some of these reminders and see like one day, if you did not sleep well, why is that? And you can start to identify patterns. And when you start to see a pattern where it's like, wow, I do eat dinner really late and my sleep has not been the best lately. So what happens if I eat dinner an hour earlier? Will that impact my sleep? Let's try this for seven to 14 days and see what happens. And so that's that's really, really it. I absolutely love the Aura Ring. Again, not, a, um, not an affiliate, but um, it's definitely an like a great device if you want to get nerdy and really improve your health. So with that said, I think Peter Drucker was the one that said what gets managed, what measured gets managed. And for me, I always thought that it was the metric was seven or eight hours of sleep, but I didn't understand why even when I slept seven or eight hours, sometimes I'd wake up feeling terrible. And so 
having a, a real data to go by when I have those days where I'm feeling excellent and I can start to notice trends versus days where I'm not feeling so great, I can really identify what habits work for me. Everyone is, is created differently. My, um, my coach, which I'll be talking about in a second, or like future video, is an ex-Marine and he gets six hours of sleep per night and he wakes up feeling awesome every single day. Someone like him, he can do that because he is very efficient when he sleeps. So when the deep and the REM sleep together, he gets about 40, 50% of like combined every night. So even though he only gets six hours, when society tells you you need eight solid hours of sleep, he wakes up super rested and ready to go because his quality of sleep is super efficient and really high. Whereas someone like me, if I do six hours, I wake up like a zombie. So for me, my efficiency level is around the seven and a half level mark every night because that's when I'm biologically programmed to need a seven and a half hours. And so what I do within that, those seven and a half hours is try to have, is to have better habits um, that will contribute to higher sleep quality. So um, when we like wrap up this video, let's look at some things that work for me. And please note that these are things that work for me. They may not work for you, but it's more understanding some of the destructive habits or lack of a night routine that can really um, impact your ability to recover properly. So things that really, really helped me as I found is I've cut coffee out of my diet. Um, caffeine coffee. I switched to decaf and I tell you, as someone who is naturally very anxious and high energy, I feel amazing. I go to bed instantly. I dream now, which I never used to have dreams. And just cutting decaf out of my diet has made the biggest change to my overall energy levels during the day. And of course, I love coffee too much, so I'll never cut it out I'll, like fully. So decaf for me, if you could find a good blend, I use Bulletproof. Um, or like local cafe coffee. It's excellent. I highly, highly recommend that. Another thing that works really well for me is having a set time where I shut down every night. So where my ideal bedtime is 1030, I'm not working until 10 o'clock. I need time for my brain to shut down. Otherwise, I go to bed with my mind racing. And I have to actively meditate to shut it off in order for me to like go to sleep. So I look to shut work off about 90 minutes to two hours maximum or minimum before I go to bed so that I can actually wind down. So that for me, hard stop, don't work past eight o'clock, okay? Um, actually, I'm breaking that rule right now doing Vlogmas because running a business and doing a vlog every day, um, challenging, but that's okay. It, December is a, you know, whatever. Um, so for me, it's like nine o'clock, but I'm going to bed a little bit later these days. So those two things, going decaf and shutting down about two hours before bed. Another thing is meditation and being able to practice and getting really good at shutting my mind off so that I'm not kept awake when my head hits the pillow, right? Um, that, and last but not least, having a consistent bedtime routine or a bedtime time. So instead of my sleep schedule being all over the place, you have to train your body to be in a certain circadian rhythm. So you want to set a time to go to bed every night, um, except one night a week where you're probably, you know, going out or whatever, but um, six days a week, at least commit to that sleep schedule. So your body gets used to getting tired around a certain time and waking up at a certain time. That way your body's not wasting energy and being inefficient with bedtime and schedule being all over the place. So um, luckily until now, I've been able to improve my sleep without having to rely on melatonin or CBD or any anything else like that. But um, I'd love to hear about some of your habits. What are some things that you found help improve your sleep? Or what other sleep devices are you using? Are you even tracking this? Um, I'm gonna put a link to Aura in the description. Again, not an affiliate, so don't think I'm being compensated for this. I just think it's a very helpful tool if you measure it. Apart from that, one last thing I wanna show you is the reason why my videos for the next few days are going to be a little shaky and on my 
iPhone. So first off, this little, little puppy here. Anyway, um, today I decided that it would be an amazing idea to spill coffee on my laptop. And I thought it was just a glitch until the screen started to go. And then the whole thing just got fried. So fortunately, I now have a dead computer in a vat of rice trying to remove the moisture. So I do want to give a shout out to Apple Care. I'm super grateful for this. I actually paid for Apple Care for this and they're sending me a brand new laptop and it only cost me $120. And I bought this thing about six months ago. So I'm super thankful that I got insurance. If you didn't, if don't have insurance for your devices, I highly recommend it. I don't spill drinks on stuff ever. I'm very like responsible with my things. So I was very surprised when this happened, but I will say I'm like grateful, grateful for Apple Care. And so I apologize in advance if these videos are giving you motion sickness. I'm doing my best to keep this as like, you know, stable as possible, but here we go. So anyway, guys, um, thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing to this video. Um, again, this is day 10 of Vlogmas, so I look forward to our, sorry, day eight. This is day eight Vlogmas video because I missed a couple of days. So you're going to see this and another video that I'm putting out tomorrow. My next video for actual, um, actually I'm going to keep that a surprise because I actually forgot what video is next, but it's okay. I'm going to shut up and let you get back to what you're doing. So again, love you guys. I will see you soon.